What's up guys and welcome to another episode of El Jardín Pirito. Today, we're foraging mushrooms. All right guys, so we're not going uh, out into the wilderness and foraging completely blind, um, but there are some surprises here and there in my yard that I've come to see. We've had rain for almost two weeks straight and with that um, we've got some fungi accumulating which is pretty cool i do advise that you guys do your research before consuming anything there's a number of different groups on say facebook or anything like that which i usually refer to and then i double check um, either by google my own resources etc but i do advise that you guys use caution if you are foraging and consuming your own mushrooms. So part of the permaculture aspect of what I do is um, sometimes if I see logs on the road or something, I'll collect them. Um, maybe I'll use them for you know my hatchet or whatever, some leverage cutting things or whatever. And when I'm done with them or they start rotting, I'll put them throughout the landscape or sometimes I'll just pile some up anyway. Um, in the goat pen, I pile up a lot of debris and this is good for habitat for different lizards and other things. Um, but mostly it's the aspect that mycelia break down wood. With that, it breaks down, it gets into the soil, it contributes to the mycorrhizae fungi network, and there's just a lot of benefit. Um, my whole thing is kind of mimicking aspects of a natural forest in which if a tree has fallen, it'll rot, it'll decompose, but it's not just grubs and everything that do that. A majority of it is fungi. So that being said, um, I'm going to show you guys around. There are two prominent species that I will be showing you, we'll be harvesting, and I did get my little urbanite kiln, um, kind of adobe urbanite kiln fired up. So I'm going to kind of rough it and uh, cook some up for you guys for that effect there. But uh, yeah, let's go check out what we have. So the first species we have here is Panis strigellus. You guys can let me know if I'm butchering that or not. I am by no means an expert. Like I said, I refer to some groups, I get some information, and then I do a little additional research. So some of these look like they're pretty ready, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and harvest some. We have plenty to spare here. I'm going to harvest some, and we're going to cook that up in a bit. So I'm going to take... Uh, these for sure, they look mature, and I'm just slicing them at the root there. We have uh, something chewing on these already. And I think I'm gonna go with this bottom one here. Looks pretty ready. And so this is our harvest right now. Really, I'm just tasting these um, on camera for you guys to see how things go. All right, so as far as this uh, foraging venture goes, I'm going to try some first raw and as far as fungi goes, um, most of the time you only have to cook them to make them palatable. So we'll see how this goes. These feel pretty tender. Um, I don't know if I've harvested, I probably, I'll probably go back and well, they'll probably be fine cooked, but I was going to say that some may be more palatable and edible if they're uh, harvested a little younger, but we're gonna give this a try. To be honest, um, raw, has a mushroomy flavor, a little bit of chicken, a tiny bit of like a radishy kick, most minuscule. One thing to be aware of too, when you're foraging anything, if something tastes super like spicy or um, really, really bitter, then that's usually a sign that you should spit it out. If your instinct is to spit it out like, a, uh, um, you know, peppers and stuff are different, but things that shouldn't necessarily be spicy and stuff, that's usually kind of a warning sign. So I'd be weary of that. Uh, like I said, it was like the most minuscule aspect of a radishy type flavor. Sorry, I'm just kind of cleaning this off. So far, not too bad. I'm gonna put these to the side and uh, I have a little fire going. It's been raining like crazy. All my wood is wet. Really, I just get stuff from the goat shack behind me. 
usually it's fairly dry but um yeah so we have a little fire going i'll set these to the side and there's another species i wanted to look at with you guys all right guys this next species is schizophyllum commune again let me know if i'm butchering it but yeah we're gonna give that a whirl too I'll do the same thing. I'll try it raw and then I'll try it cooked. We are getting a little wet here, so I'm trying to beat the clock. Also, uh, if you're getting any background music from the neighbors, that's just where I live. So this one, I'm just gonna take a little mature piece here. Looks mature. And that's what we're looking at here. To be honest, I don't know if it's better to get older or younger. But they're both pretty tender. This one doesn't taste like much initially, but it does have that mushroom aftertaste. A little bit drier. So let me get a younger piece here and see if that's just the age factor. I'm not loving the texture of the younger piece. Actually, it was a little bit bitter. So I'm gonna disregard that. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and cook up this uh, piece here. All right, guys, if you can tell, my camera is waterproof, but I don't trust it 100%, and I do have a mic mounted on there. But uh, my initial plan was to use an open flame up here. Um, I may just have to pull some coals out and uh, get this done quicker but yeah this is my adobe kiln by the way I did do a uh, natural clay video in the past and uh, I was gonna showcase this at some point but right now it's just the fact that it gets it's been wet but it gets really hot really easily So I have a few, uh, so I have a few goodies here. Just a little bit of lemon pepper. I'm gonna put a uh, second species to the side here. Focus on the first. I have some uh, chive that is from the garden. So I'm gonna put a little coconut oil in here. And we're just kind of roughing it here. I'm going to get that hot, just placing it right in the fire. Just kind of some hot coals. I might actually pull a few out, but it has been very wet, so uh, not a whole lot of action. All right. And before I get too carried away, some dirt spilled in there. It's all right, we're roughing it, right? So I'll go ahead and kind of prep this stuff. I will say so far, uh, raw, I do like the first contestant a lot more. I'm actually a little skeptical of the second one because of that bitter aspect, although sources told me it was edible, but it wasn't like this outright you know despicable taste it i just didn't uh, prefer it to this one so we're just kind of chopping up a little bit and with the rain picking up i don't know that i will get to taste in that with you guys today and i'm gonna have the chives aside and throw those in after they cook a little more All right, so we have our oils already melted here. Let's place those on. Pray to the gods that uh, the rain lets up. We're gonna just bring this big hot coal out here. See if we can heat this puppy up before the rain really starts coming down. All right guys, so I had to pull out of the rain. I did finish cooking these indoors sorry for that let down there so first thing i'm going to try the panis spragellus again let me know if i'm butchering it 
smelled really good. My kids were like, what's that? And they don't dig mushrooms. Cooking it really brought out a lot of flavor. Comparable to like shiitake or portobello. Really awesome actually. I would suggest uh, cooking this very lightly. It got a little chewy along the way. I had them going for a little bit there. So let's move on to the next. Hopefully they're better cooked too. All right, so Skyzophyllum communion. Let's check it out. I'm just gonna use my hand. Starts off as almost nothing. A little chewier, but it could have been overcooked too. A lot more pleasant cooked, but very, very mild. I'll have to look up the nutrition facts for each one, because that might determine if I implement these a little more in my cooking, but the gist of this video was, you know, foraging your own stuff at home. And basically just throwing logs around, letting them rot, and uh, seeing what pops up. Mushrooms are seasonal. If you try to grow your own, it's very hard to sterilize things, get things exactly right. But if you hand it off to nature, let nature do its thing. You know, it may be the right time, place, and all that. But um, you let nature do its thing, it's going to give you something. All right, guys. So this was just kind of like a fun venture I wanted to bring you guys along with. Forging in general can seem intimidating. And it seems like, uh, you know, you have to live in the complete wilderness or way up north or, you know, in British Columbia to find all these awesome edible mushrooms and whatnot. But um, yeah, it was just, I saw things coming up. I got resourceful. I kind of looked um, in different sources for what things were. And so, you know, that's a completely effortless reward. So I advise you guys, uh, even if you're not throwing logs around, um, another factor is wood chips, although I've found that most of the edibles tend to grow out of logs, at least in my area, Houston, Texas. But yeah, mostly I just wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. So let me know down in the comments if you guys are familiar with any local uh, varieties around here in Houston, Texas, or in your region. Comment below, let me know. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time.